This DM is falsely accusing his player of cheating. He's being a dishonest dipstick, but there's one massive obstacle getting in his way, and that is himself. So over the course of this story, he will slowly turn everyone against him as he goes from sneaky and dishonest to accusatory and insane. Roll post. I'm the only girl in my current D&D campaign, but I don't really mind or feel uncomfortable about it since all the guys I play with have been nothing but welcoming and chill towards me. My only grievance is that the DM has made comments since I started playing with them about how every quote, female he has played with before always lies about their dice rolls so that they can quote, impress all the guys and look better and hotter in their eyes. Which is a super weird thing to bring up in my opinion. I had just started and had shown no signs of lying about anything, so I was already kinda weirded out by the fact that he felt the need to bring it up, but whatever. I kinda just brushed it off, said that I'd played before, and that I don't fake dice rolls because that ruins the experience and the risk of the game, and my actions, which ruins the game for me and everybody else. DM seemed to accept that and let it go, at the time. However, I have noticed that at least once per session, he'll make some comments somewhere along the lines of how, quote, Females just lie all the time. It's what they're biologically good at, and they all lie in games like this to look sexy to the men there. No one at the table really responds when he makes these comments. One of the guys tried once earlier on to mention that that was a sexist and off-topic thing to bring up, but the DM got mad at being cut off from, quote, sharing my personal life experiences and knowledge so, no one has spoken up about it since. Has the DM been taking his normal pills? He doesn't get to whine about his personal knowledge and experience being objected to if the things he's saying are just slander directed at more than half of the human race. This is a classic case of someone who can dish it, but can't take it. I'm going to attack women's character, but if you even object to the idea that women are anything but liars who constantly need validation, Oh, oh woe is me, I'm being invalidated. Somehow I'm the victim in this scenario. Make that make sense. This nonsensical double standard mindset will stain everything that he does moving forward. Even more interesting is that we'll get to see his villain origin story before long, but I'm not gonna spoil that, roll post. The last session was probably the most risky and dangerous situation the party has been in since the start of the campaign, and there were a few times where I had to roll and lives were on the line if I failed. Somehow, I managed to get at least the bare minimum I needed to succeed. I needed a 15 or higher in some cases, since I usually had advantages. Everyone else was having similar luck though, so I was just hyped that we were rolling lucky that night. I did also have plenty of horrible rolls, so it wasn't as if I was only rolling successes the whole session. But the DM seemed to be getting frustrated more and more with each successful roll I announced. He made a comment that I thought at the time was a joke. He chuckled and said, It was almost like I was faking it to win with how good my luck was. I had been rolling in front of me where everyone could see though, so nothing was hidden. I didn't think there was any concern that I was cheating, so I just laughed and said that yeah, my luck was wild tonight. Then at the end of the session, the DM said that I had one more save roll to get us out of there, avoiding another fight that would probably end badly for us. I needed a nat 20 or I would fail. One of my party members assisted, so I had advantage, but the odds of success were still low. I rolled both dice, and by some miracle I did it. I rolled a nat 20 both times. It was glorious and everyone was super hyped. The DM just looked mad though. We all joked that he wanted us to fail so he could show off some more characters he made and do more of the fun combat stuff. He kinda chuckled and said it was something like that. The DM reads as that one guy playing a video game, and whenever something doesn't go his way, he throws a whiny fit and blames the lag, or hackers, or whatever it takes to offload responsibility. Oh, the player's rolling well and it's stopping me from progressing the story exactly the way I want it? Well, hmm, <laughs> the player is obviously cheating because nobody has ever had good luck before. I will say the probability of rolling two nat 20s is simultaneously very rare, 
but it's also a common shared experience among veteran D&D players. That's because it's always memorable and the probability is like 1 in 400, so it's far from impossible. If you play D&D long enough, it's practically guaranteed to happen. Anyways, even if that wasn't true, the DM is about to confront OP and his accusation is about to fall flat on its face in just a moment. The session then ended calmly with us getting back to our keep and getting set up to rest. Then we called it a night. Everyone packed up and we went our separate ways, assuming that was the end for the night. I got a message two hours later from the DM and he was telling me he knows I cheated and lied about my dice rolls just to look better in front of the guys. He said he was nice enough to not call me out there and embarrass me in front of everyone like he should have but that he could no longer trust me. He demanded that I give him my dice next session, and from there on, he will be rolling behind his DM screen for me, since I am, quote, proving to be just like every other lying female, and ruining the game for all the honest guys who are playing with me. I was stunned. I didn't know what to say, so I just told him I had never lied, that I was sharing dice with one of the guys so they aren't just some weighted set or anything, and that all my rolls were in the open where everyone could easily see, that I could understand he may have had bad experiences in the past with players, but I had done nothing wrong and would not be letting him roll for my character for the rest of the campaign. I really like the group I play with and the campaign's story is super interesting so I don't think I'll be quitting, but I certainly am not just gonna sit by and not roll ever again, and I don't know what to do in this situation. I'm still so out of touch and insulted that he thought I was cheating or lying. This is the unfortunate situation of many horror stories. It's rare that the entire party is bad. More often than not, everything would be great, but there is one major, borderline, unsolvable problem that holds the group back. If it was as simple as the whole group being rotten, there wouldn't be as much tension or horror story as you can justify leaving those groups sooner. But in this case, where everything is great except the DM's terrible attitude, it can cause a lot of tension. Roll post. For those saying he has a crush on me, yeah. He asked me out when I was a freshman in high school and he was a senior. We were both in the same clubs and he seemed nice enough to give him a chance, so I said yes. We only dated about a month or two before he got super possessive and controlling, so I broke it off. He was still super bitter, so I cut him off entirely up until about two years ago. We only reconnected because we live in a small town and we share most of the same friends. He has asked me out three times since then and I have turned him down each time. The last attempt he made at asking me out, I very bluntly told him that if he ever asked me out again, I would cut him out of my life permanently. He seemed to get the message and has, up until this game started, actually has been really chill around me and never pushed my boundaries or said anything creepy. He just acted normally like all the other guys I'm friends with. Some of the other guys have said that they will start to stand up for me in this matter, I screenshotted the conversation I had with DM and sent it to them this morning, and they were all shocked he was acting like that to me. I live in a small town, and so this is the only group to play with around me. If I quit this group, I have no idea when or if I'll be able to play again, and I really do like the other guys in the party. But none of them like to DM, and I'm still super new and don't really feel comfortable trying to DM for the group. I have known DM and two of the guys since freshman year of high school when they were both seniors, and DM had sometimes been a quote, nice guy, but he was never this much like an incel neckbeard type. So this behavior was surprising to us, which is why I think they only spoke up once and were just kind of confused about it after that. We're about to get into his villain backstory, but I'm not a confrontational guy. I don't like starting arguments because the chance that I actually change someone's mind is much lower than the chance of me rolling two nat 20s. But this is completely different. This is a scenario where challenging the DM's viewpoint is a good idea, but that's because we're not trying to change his mind. It's because he's outright attacking someone who did nothing wrong. So bashing his views will show her that people are not just silently agreeing with the DM. 
If you were in this scenario and I was the little crab angel on your shoulder, I would tell you that you can do it any way you want, but you need to do it. You can be argumentative and attack his character, you can be humorous and mock him, or you can be passive-aggressive and dismissive. But the whole point of it is to signal to the DM that his behavior is ugly and embarrassing, while also signaling to the woman that out of everyone in this room, at the very least, you don't agree with what the DM is saying. You get two birds stoned at once, and best case scenario, everyone agrees with you because fear of social rejection is a huge motivator in people's behavior. If someone says something unbearably cringe, like the DM tends to do, just calling it what it is can go surprisingly far. It's not a silver bullet, but it helps. Unfortunately, it goes both ways. Fear of social rejection also keeps people in bad friend groups, communities, and abusive relationships. It's an unfortunately easy part of human behavior to manipulate. OP is now considering leaving the game, but does she? Let's see. But anyways, how it all went down yesterday was not at all what I expected to happen, to be completely honest. I had shown all the other guys I played with the messages that DM had sent me. I was clear with them that this was not acceptable, and that either they supported me and got DM to straighten his act up, or I was leaving. I also made it clear that I had nothing against them, that I really liked gaming with them and would be happy to continue playing with them, with a different dungeon master, if I had to leave, and that we would still be friends outside of the game. All of them were appalled at how he had been acting, and the messages seemed to be the straw that broke the camel's back. After showing them all the messages, they said that they had to talk about some stuff and would get back to me before the next session. But most were clear that they were on my side in this matter. One of the guys got back to me the day before the session and said that they were all behind me 100%, and that they had all been calling the DM out the past two weeks since the last session. I guess they were demanding he shape up and explain where this mindset came from and why he was acting like such an ass. Well, I decided that since I had support from the rest of the group, I would go back for this session, but if he made a single comment, I was leaving then and there, just walking out. When I got to the place where we were all meeting at, DM asked us to sit down and he was sounding really uncomfortable and he wouldn't look anyone in the eye. He said that he wanted to talk to us, but we had to sit down first. Well, he went on to tell us about his past three girlfriends. Oh. <laughs> You thought his villain backstory was about dating OP? Plot twist, and welcome to the weirdest story beat in this entire tale. One of the girls he had dated for two months before saying she was a lesbian and leaving. The second girlfriend cheated on him with someone else from one of his classes, and the third one, which he says was the breaking point for him, asked to join a game he was DMing for at his college, and ended up hitting it off with one of the guys there, and they broke up. He showed us screenshots of the conversations they had leading up to and after each breakup, and honestly, I can see why the guy was pretty crushed about it all. It sucks big time to be cheated on. We did know that he had been in those relationships, and I knew that the one later came out, and that the second one had cheated on him, but no one knew about why the third relationship fell out. He never wanted to talk about it with anyone. And after each relationship, he went through the stages of mourning the relationship, and we did what we could to support him, but he always seemed to bounce back. And if anyone tried to talk to him about it, he was very convincing in telling us that he had been sad for long enough now, and that he was doing better and was moving on. So none of us really knew the full stories of everything that went down or how it had actually affected him. I was honest with him that I was sorry he had been through that and I did empathize with how he was feeling and how he was hurt, but that none of it was an excuse for how he had been treating me or how he had been speaking, that his behavior was still unacceptable and incredibly cruel and hurtful and it made me feel unsafe to be around him anymore. The other guys at the table backed me up for saying that, as shitty as his situation was, it did not excuse or forgive the way he had been acting. They were clearly behind me, which 
I will admit, was a huge relief. DM asked what he had to do to get us to stay, and one of the guys said that the main issue would be earning my trust back, and that it was up to me to decide what that meant. And that aside from that, the guys had lost trust in the DM and his ability to be fair to all the players at the table, and that he would have to earn their trust back as well as their respect for him as a friend. The DM then told me that he had known he was wrong to act and speak like that, and that he had been angry and spiteful because of his past experiences, and because he was hurt when I turned him down each time he asked me out between his past relationships and after his last girlfriend broke up with him. He said he was taking his anger out on me and venting because it was easy to blame me for it. I'll admit, I had fully expected him to go nuclear and yell or something when I showed up for the session. I was not prepared for this. We didn't end up having a session that night. The DM said he would leave for now and let me think on if or how he could gain all of our trust back. So the DM left and the other guys and I honestly didn't know what to do about it. I don't know what to tell the DM for how he can earn my trust and the trust of the other players. I don't know if he can even earn that trust back with me. I have a lot to think about for now. I'm considering telling him that therapy is a good first step for gaining my trust back. He has always had some really bad anger issues and some other personal things that I believe therapy could help him work through, and with all this new stuff, my belief that he could use a good therapist is even stronger now. He has always been kind of put off by the idea of therapy though, and I remember he was clear he thought it was dumb when I got therapy back during my senior year for some traumas I had been through. But I don't know, maybe this whole situation could be what finally makes him see that he can't do it on his own. He already seems to be realizing that his quote, coping methods are only going to lead to him losing several of his friendships. This whole post is a trip. Honestly, while I admit therapy is not a one-all cure to make you a good person, it's also not up to DM to decide what's best at this point. If his goal is to get their trust back, and that means going to therapy, he just has to decide whether he wants his friends back that much. I want to start peddling more tales of positivity from here out, so if anybody has positive stories about good things happening, r slash critcrab is sitting right there. I'd really love to hear it, and as always, till next time.